My wife recently gave me this journal as an early birthday present, so I suppose I'll use it to pass the time. My name is Connor Terrence and Serpan, and I'm the driver of the Northwestern Railway 060 PTX Great Western Railway 5700 class engine known as Montague, but everyone just calls him Duck. Very recently, the railway's number one engine named Thomas rediscovered an old abandoned mining town called Great Waterton. Sir Topham Hatt, the controller of the railway, was very pleased with its rediscovery and made plans to restore the town immediately. Just in time too, since Silver Day is just around the corner. For Silver Day, a smoke show is going to be hosted, although I'm not as excited as everyone else about it. The chemicals they're going to be using seem rather deadly if control is lost of them, although I'm probably just overthinking it. Anyways, enough of my ramblings. We've just finished shunting some trucks now, so we should be heading off now. I'll update this journal if anything of interest happens, or if I just get bored. So, something else happened, so here I am writing again. We were getting ready to take a passenger train from Natford when Eric, Duck's fireman, and I heard some discussing with some unfamiliar voices in Sir Topham Hat about how the chemicals are dangerous and should be disposed of immediately. We weren't able to stick around for long to hear most of the conversation since the guard blew his whistle, but what we did hear has me a bit more worried. Even more, one of the engines have gone missing. No clue as to who it is though. I should probably make a second log soon to memorize all the engines again. Anyways, not too much else other than that. The smoke show's date is coming up pretty fast though. I really hope they dispose of the chemicals or it just gets delayed or something. I don't know. I just really have a bad feeling about all of it. We're busier than ever at the moment, so not too much time to reflect on it. Once I find more time, I'll probably write again. Damn it, just what I was afraid of. I think the worst has just happened. We were shunting Gordon's express coaches as he had to take a night train to Vickerstown, but as we were uncoupled from the coaches, we heard sirens blaring from Great Waterton. Eric and I looked at each other, and we knew something was up. We weren't sticking around to see what it was though, and we raced back to the little western to get Duck into a shed. We yelled for Gordon to come with us, but he started charging forwards down the main line. I seriously hoped to God nothing bad really happened and it was just false alarms or something. About an hour ago now, the siren stopped blaring. I'm really nervous as to why the sirens lasted for as long as they did, so we ventured out of the shed to haul trough to try to find some supplies and food if we can. We still don't really know if anything did happen, but we sure as hell aren't falling back if it did. Once Eric comes back out, we'll venture back down to Tidmouth Halt and get Duck into a shed for the night, once again hoping that the sirens just malfunctioned or something. I'm just trying to cling on to any little bit of hope I can, but after hearing that conversation at Natford, I don't have much. I hope everyone's going to be okay, especially Gordon. I wonder where he went. I didn't write yesterday, since nothing happened really. Eric and I overheard on the radio that those alarms were false. However, it's still very concerning that the alarms lasted for that long, even if it was a false alarm. I'm probably still overreacting, but you can't blame me after overhearing that conversation in Napford a few days back. We have a good train we need to take, so I'll write again soon when I can. I am yawning, terrified, I'm shaking, and it's incredibly hard to write, but I'll, I'll try my best. The train we needed to take to Crovin's Gate, an engine named Neville was there to take the trucks off our hands into Great Waterton, so we uncoupled and turned around for the return journey as Neville started off toward Great Waterton with the freight cars. As soon as we turned around, the alarm started going off again. Eric said it was probably just another false alarm again, but I wasn't risking it. I told him to shovel in more coal quickly, and thank god he did. We looked back to see some massive cloud forming out of Great Waterton. I slammed Duck into full throttle and we rocked it out of Coven's gate, hearing Neville scream in agony as we did. He probably got the full effect of the chemicals judging by how close he was.
Nearing Kildane, I looked back to see the crowd the cloud was spreading incredibly quickly, and then I heard Duck shouting. I looked forward to see Donald, the Scottish tender engine, heading the opposite way. Duck tried his best to give Donald a warning, but was cut off by his scream. We assumed Donald is a lost cause too. We just hope his twin Douglas will be okay without him if he is. Once we were nearing Marin, we saw people panicking on the platform. We whistled and yelled for them to get to safety as we barreled through. Eric was now sweating immensely. He had pure terror on his face. Same with Duck. We began running well on coal. When we saw Daniel, the signalman in the signal box, and we yelled for him to switch to points. Thank God he did, as if he didn't, he probably would be dead by now. Eventually, we found an empty shed and we pulled into it, closing the doors behind us just as the cloud reached us. We're safe now, but we're far from okay. Eric's panicking in a corner. Duck's crying because he couldn't warn Donald in time, and I'm in a mix of both. We're waiting till we hear it's safe to venture back out again. I'll update this journal when we reach that point. It's been nearly five hours, but we still haven't heard if it's safe to go out yet. Eric and I have stopped panicking, and we got Duck to stop crying but he's still extremely upset about Donald. I am too. I just want to get out of this shed. We finally heard on the radio that the cloud was gone, but the mutation level was unknown. We decided to head out. We found a truck of coal nearby, so we refueled on coal while we had the chance. It took some convincing of Duck and Eric, but we're now on our way to find supplies and hopefully survivors. Before we left, we went into a nearby grocery store to get any supplies we could from there. When we came back, Duck swore that he saw Edward race by, unable to tell if he was alive, dead, mutated, or anything of the sort. We're on our way to the for now. We'll update this once we arrive. at Napford. What can I say? It weren't nothing pretty. Everyone on the platform was either dead or mutated. There was one man who had lost his legs and was just crawling around making these awful groaning sounds. His eyes were pitch black and blood emitted from his mouth. Eric and I looked at each other and we silently agreed on what to do. He pulled out his pistol and shot the mutant dead along with anyone else who had been affected by the cloud. Duck started crying afterwards, saying that they wouldn't be dead if we had just pushed them harder all the way to Napford. We can't convince them that we wouldn't have made it if we tried. I guess that's what you call survivor's guilt. We did find some food, but we soon left. We couldn't keep looking at all the dead corpses. We headed to the coastline to try to find Oliver, Duck's best friend. We found signs of no one, which made Duck and myself feel even more upset. Oliver's fireman is my brother. I don't know what I'll do if he's gone. Same with my wife and my son. I can't stomach the thought that they might be gone. We can't keep going for today, so we're stopped at Tidmouth Hall for the rest of the day. We'll head back out tomorrow. The sudden shock of this is just hitting way too hard. Duck and Eric have fallen asleep, but I just can't. I'm worried sick about everyone, my family, my friends. I'll try my best to sleep now, I guess. I assume we have a big day ahead of us tomorrow. <laughs>